Yo, Snapchat! Golf anyone? No? Uh, let's discuss DAOs. Um, first I'll backtrack and discuss what a DAO actually is. So a DAO or DAO is a brand new type of uh, human organization that is entirely run by code. It's autonomous, can never ever be shut down, and it's run on blockchain technology. So it's decentralized and distributed. The reason why Bitcoin is such a revolutionary technology isn't because it's an online digital currency. It's the fact that it's underpinned by blockchain technology, which enables it to be safe and secure with no trusted middleman or bank. And that creates a really great and secure distributed system where you can have peer-to-peer -peer currency. So when I transfer you one Bitcoin, there's actually an entire historical cryptographic ledger that says I actually have that coin. Meaning it's basically impossible for you to hack the system. I mean, you can't just go in and just add a thousand Bitcoins to your wallet address because there's an entire cryptographic history and computational process that's occurred to make that safe and secure. Now when you buy something off someone on the Bitcoin network or make a transaction, all you're really doing is saying um, transfer coins from this address to that address. So it subtracts it from your address and adds it to someone else's address. Now Bitcoin is only really built as a platform for currency, but since you're just transferring information between addresses, you can, in a complicated way, actually build apps that develop and deploy onto that Bitcoin network. So as a way to make that easier, a bunch of people launched a thing called Ethereum, which is only maybe a year old now, um, and that allows you to write applications and deploy them into a distributed blockchain system. So now you can write an app using you know, regular programming language and then you can like, deploy it to this system. Um, it sits on all the distributed miners' servers and when you send information to that address, it processes and does something. So these are called smart contracts or dApps. Um, and when you combine a few of them together and add a few little kind of external things, you can call them DAOs, where they can kind of run themselves. And the cool thing is you can never ever shut them down. The Bitcoin and the Ethereum blockchains are run by a group of miners. So there's an incentive for them to use their computational resources and processing power to keep the system going. It's much like the internet now, where it's distributed and decentralized, where if you have, say, 100,000 nodes, like 100,000 computers, and you kill half of them, you still got another half. You have to kill 100% to make the system stop. And this is why DAOs are going to become massive, because once you deploy them, they can never ever be shut down. And the way I like looking at them is kind of like a combination of open source projects plus developer platforms that are decentralized. Okay, so let's go this, through those ideas. So an insurance DAO. So at the moment, there are, what, hundreds of thousands of different insurance companies offering all sorts of different insurance, like life insurance, property insurance, business insurance, personal that industry is probably worth trillions of dollars, like it's a huge industry, and really all that's happening is you're paying a premium, there's some probabilistic math behind the scenes, and then you're gonna pay out if something goes wrong. So with a global DAO that you could deploy, almost like as a back-end system for this insurance DAO, um, you could replace all the buildings, all the companies, all the employees, you don't need any of them globally. But I think the first thing you create is kind of like a back-end, almost like a developer platform. So you just create this back-end DAO that everyone can plug into, this decentralized system. So if you wanna start an insurance company, you just plug into this system. So imagine the same type of like, you know, hundreds of thousands of different like insurance providers and companies and stuff, but they're all operating, they're all providing the front end customer service and support for plugging into this decentralized backend. Because something you can do with the DAO is actually automate a lot of insurance claims and insurance premiums to bring the cost down like massively by orders of magnitude. So let's just look at like life insurance as one example. With life insurance, you basically pay a premium, which is worked out by some crazy complicated maths. And then, you know, if you die, it's then proven that you're dead by some humans and then you get a payout to someone. With the DAO, you could actually have uh, had your premiums paid into a distrib distributed decentralized wallet address, and those funds are automatically paid out in the event that you do die. And it's because that DAO would be enti entirely autonomous. So what it would do is like basically use uh, external oracles or APIs, uh, say death registrars or something, and it would just check almost every day or every week to see if you're dead. And if it does, it releases. The and then rather than having to go through a lawyer and like you know tell your lawyer who you want the funds to go to and what percentage how you want to distribute it and all that sort of thing, you can code that in, and the the code will execute the way you program. Okay, jobs DAO. How many listing sites are there for jobs and gigs? How many different uh, recruiting platforms, recruiting companies, uh, education institutes that provide degrees and all this crap? They're all using their own proprietary systems. They're, none of them are sharing data. They're all like um, getting their own job listings. They're scraping each other's sites. They're, they're adding them all into their own UIs, their own systems. Yeah. Like if you've ever started looking for a job, you've probably got like a, a profile on LinkedIn. That's all LinkedIn's data. They own all that on their servers. You've probably got a profile on Seek or like whatever your local listing job site is. So a much better system would be to have the jobs DAO where it's a decentralized global thing where all those all those services, LinkedIn, Seek, all those other ones, all plug into this backend, but the data's all shared and open. 
And when you have that system, you can actually have yourself registered on there. So you can have a list of all your skills and qualifications, um, all your university degrees, what sort of work you're looking for, what pay rates, um, your availability, everything. So that alone would replace the entire recruitment industry. Then what you can do is actually enable uh, and allow all these like job listing sites to post their job um, requests to that same DAO. Meaning any employer globally, they go to their normal like listing site, you know, they're looking for someone, to, they're looking to hire someone, they go to some site, they make the listing, but all that data is then posted to the DAO, so it's a global decentralized source. And then the DAO can also like connect that gig, basically all the world's gigs, all the world's problems, all the world's uh, gigs, jobs, whatever, work requests, hire requests, and then match them to people. Like, looking for work is still such a fucking pain in the ass at the moment for a lot of people. Even, like, uh, like full-time jobs, part-time jobs, contract work, freelance work, it's so hard. You should just be able to get it instantly. And it should be instantly matched to your skill set and your, your skill level. Um, this is where I like this, like, jobs role-playing game idea, role, like RPG, where you're, uh, you level up in certain skills and you learn as you go. And again, this jobs DAO, once it's matured enough, it will, repl will replace um, education institutes globally, uh, recruitment institute institutes globally, and 9 to 5 jobs. Everyone will be a contractor. And there's also the network effect, um, and because this thing is like globally distributed and can never ever be shut down, it's not like you're launching a new startup and trying to convince all these companies to plug into your servers, it's just distributed, it always will exist. It can never be shut down, and the more people plug into it, and the more they use it, the more it grows, the more value it adds, that whole network effect, where people will want to plug in, and all the existing providers will want to plug into the system. Okay, science DAO, similar issue to the jobs thing. Um, think of how many like paid, you know, paywall journals there are, like paid science journals, where all the world's information is behind paywalls. What? The uh, Aaron Swartz case is notorious for this, where he basically like um, ripped uh, all the JSTOR journals and then tried to basically look, uh, give them away for free. And there's another one trying to do something similar now. So it's called SciHub, so it's basically like the Pirate Bay for um, scientific journals. But so imagine if that was a DAO instead. Imagine if journals could actually all plug into the same decentralized uh, data store where anyone can access all science. So the same idea, you leverage the whole like value out of the network effect, the growing network effect, and the fact that it can never be shut down this system. And you enable that, you, you leverage that to free science, to free knowledge and make it open. Because it would almost be a system like Torrents, like the Pirate Bay for science and journals and data and information, but you can add extra things on top, like you actually add a search engine that's distributed and can never ever be shut down. So you would go and rip every single data journal you can find from all those evil fuckers that have science and knowledge behind paywalls. What, well, it's 2016 guys. And then add it to this system. Then you index all those journals, you add a search engine to it. This search engine is distributed, it's, it's built into the blockchain. So it can ne it's not running on any server, no one can ever find it, because it's not, it's not running anywhere, it's, it's everywhere. And you could even like create your own cryptocurrency for science, which would help people kind of invest in different companies, like uh, invest in equity in different scientific research, crowdfund research, all sorts of stuff like that. So hopefully that gives a good little insight into DAOs and the power of the Ethereum blockchain, and kind of the ways you kind of think about this system as like these, these open data backends that everyone can plug into. So let's have your thoughts. I future, what do you think? Any ideas for a DAO? Let me know.